Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegil Guy. It's challenge time again and this time I had a challenge for Perry. Well, actually, it was my son who had a challenge for me. He's well into Epic Games Fortnite and wanted me to cast something from the game. Well, I didn't have the faintest idea where to begin. But after a quick look around Thingiverse, I found this fabulous keychain file. I don't have a 3D printer, so I use 3D hubs to print this for me, and it looks great. It's nice and chunky, but to be honest, it's a bit too big for a keychain, unless you happen to run a prison. But nonetheless, it does look nice. There is a slight fault, and this is obvious on the STL file. For this challenge, I decided to smooth the lettering off, rubbing things down lightly with sandpaper. I used some car body filler on the really stubborn tool marks, and I filled in that little fault. I decided to leave the background tool marks in though, as I really liked the way they looked. I decided to go with my current nemesis, Lost Wax Casting again. No! The pattern was really starting to grow on me, so I decided to thicken up the depth and add to its chunkiness. I took some ordinary plasticine, play-doh, modeling clay, whatever you want to call it, and I worked this onto the back of the print. I pushed this firmly onto the backboard of the mold box, and as you'd expect, it oozed out nicely. However, there were still plenty of voids that needed filling, but I eventually managed to get things under control and smooth the edges out nicely. I built up the sides of the mould box with cardboard and masking tape, as the moulding silicon expands up to five times during the vacuum process. I mixed up the silicon according to the manufacturer's instructions and poured it on. Now, my vacuum chamber helped to pull out most of the trapped air, but I wasn't fast enough this time, and I only just made it. The next day there were clearly surface bubbles visible, but fortunately, these were only on the top of the silicon, and not all the way through. I dismantled the box, and the silicon thankfully looked great, though clearing away the plasticine was a pain. In hindsight, it would have been better to use a water-soluble clay that could have been washed away easily. Once clean, molten casting wax was poured into the mould. This was swirled around for a few seconds and then emptied. After a few moments, once the wax had cooled and solidified a little, the process was repeated. This continued until all of the detail had been filled in, and then I just topped off with more wax. After a few hours to cool and solidify, the pattern was eased out and it looked beautifully sharp and detailed. I took the same mould box and drilled three holes into the base. Three screws protruded very slightly and were just enough to grip the wax pattern in place. The plaster investment was poured on and after a couple of hours was set enough to be released from the box. The plaster flask was baked in my foundry at roughly 100 degrees Celsius for around 10 minutes, and this was enough to allow the wax to melt free into a collection container. And this went on to be baked in my foundry for several hours, all according to the manufacturer's instructions. Once cool, it looked quite nice, but a closer inspection shows these tiny bubbles of plaster. Now I vacuumed the plaster investment correctly, before and after the pour, so how these bubbles are present I just don't know. However, they were easy to clean away with just the lightest possible touch. Last time out, I went with a green sand backing and no vent, but this time I decided to change things around a little. Starting with the drag, I lowered the plaster flask into place. I sprinkled on a little talcum powder and added some sand. As usual, my fingers pressed lightly around the edges to help squeeze the sand firm. More sand was added until I felt confident enough to ram gently, and notice that I said gently. 
even when hammering here, I wasn't going hard. Eventually the sand was scraped level. Then the drag was set carefully to one side. But hang on. Despite all that careful ramming, the plaster is still cracked. It really is fragile stuff. Now the cope was filled with sand, and this time I didn't have to be so careful. With the cope leveled and ready, the drag was placed in its correct position. And then the cope was carefully lowered into its rightful place. Once raised, the tulk left a faint outline of the plaster pattern. Picking up on my last video, again I'm going to be using a Myford Boy style feeder so I cored a feed hole using a length of copper pipe. This time though, there's no runners as such. The gates are very short, and these are cut by hand, and the sand is shaped and pressed. Additionally, I added a vent, and I used a smaller diameter pipe to do this. All the loose sand and talc was brushed away by air, but the air pressure is very, very light. Too much pressure and everything will come flying out. The drag was also cleaned of debris in exactly the same way. At this point, the cope and the drag were reunited. I took my trusty spoke and poked plenty of ventilation holes. Remember, these shouldn't quite go the full depth of the cope. With the feeder and vent extended a little, it was time for the pour, and my homemade electric foundry was cooking away silently in the background. The pour was quick and easy. Importantly, neither feeder nor vent froze instantly, but remained open a few seconds, allowing trapped gases to pass through the molten metal. About 20 minutes later, I pulled the cans away. Once again, as I pulled away the cope, the plaster investment largely stayed behind, and the casting wasn't looking too bad. Now, I genuinely thought I'd taken better images of this, so I'm sorry guys, but this is all I've got. And this time, those large black specks are actually sand. There is a little porosity, but not much. If it hadn't been for the cracked plaster, which did show through, I would have left things as they were. But to remove these cracks, I needed to grind the lettering. And of course, I also had to grind away those sprues. The top edges also needed a little work with a file, but this was due to the plasticine and wax join, and not due to the casting process. Sure, the back isn't perfect, but I couldn't be bothered to spend hours grinding on that. But rubbing the face of the lettering with gradually finer grades of sandpaper didn't seem a difficult task, and I knew Perry would be doing his best to make his look pretty. But if I'm going to be completely honest, this was the point where I ran out of enthusiasm. I had planned on painting the background, but I actually liked the way this looked. The tool marks appealed to me and I was genuinely pleased to have produced a lost wax casting in a fairly simple way that was almost ready to go straight from the foundry. The lettering may not be perfect, but that's me getting used to handling the wax, and that in itself is very much an art form. And if you look carefully, sure, you'll see some porosity, 
but it's nothing like we have been seeing. Frankly, I don't care if Perry has produced something better than me. I don't care if mine isn't as good as his. What I care about is finally having a work of lost wax casting that puts a smile on my face rather than a grimace. So that about wraps up this Fortnite casting challenge for now guys. Don't forget to head over to SW Dweeb and take a look at what he's been doing in this exact same challenge. If you can, share our videos with your casting buddies and really make our day. It gives us a great thrill to see your likes and comments. And when there's plenty of views, it makes us remember exactly why we put all the time and effort into these videos. So subscribe, like, comment and share. It makes us happy bunnies. So that's it for now guys. Take care and thanks for watching.